Well, good morning. Uh, thanks for joining us. I love this graphic that Josh Potts uh, made for us, and he does such a great job. Off, awesome graphic designer, as well as our children's pastor. Turtles always win. Isn't that interesting? We're going to get more to that later. But just a couple announcements as we uh, get started today. Uh, first of all, our leaders have promised uh, 13600 to Faith Promise Plus. That's just our outreach giving and that's over 27 percent of our total goal of 50,000 so if you want to jump in on that uh, you can email at admin at cantnazarene.com just so we can keep track of all the promises again this is giving over an entire year starting this month and all the way through april of 2021 so just ask god about that and be obedient and join in so we can just bless uh, our community and our world and then June 7th is the comeback. Just uh, next week, just seven days away, the comeback. We're actually gonna be here in this physical place. We're gonna have two services at nine and 10.30, just 45 minutes long. So you gotta be on time. They're gonna start and end on time. And again, we need you to email admin at cantnazarene.com to register for those services. And the content is gonna be great. And the way we present it is gonna be just wonderful for every age. So if you do have children, please, uh, I want you to know we're thinking about them. We're going to have some special uh, packets for the kids as well. So, you know, maybe if they get a little bored, they'll have something uh, to do as well. So let me pray uh, for us, and then we're going to jump into the message this morning. God, uh, thanks for the opportunity to open up your word. And I pray that your word would just speak to us and do the work in us that it needs to do. Thank you for this wonderful church. I thank you for all the people that will listen to this message. And God, meet them at their point of need. And I pray this in Jesus' name, amen. Well, what I really want to talk to you about today is leading through change, because that's where we all are. And in some way, all of us are leading through change. And I just have a wonderful principle uh, to share with you this morning, and I'm, I'm very excited uh, about the message. So I want to start off with a fable that I'm going to read from this book. And if you see the screen here, you might even be able to guess what fable it is because this is the moral of the story that slow and steady wins the race. But here we go. A hare was making fun of the tortoise one day for being so slow. Do you ever get anywhere? He asked with a mocking laugh. Well, yes, replied the tortoise. And I get there sooner than you think. I'll run you a race and prove it. And the hare was much amused at the idea of running a race with the tortoise. But for the fun of the thing, he agreed. So the fox, who had consented to act as judge, marked the distance and started the runners off. The hare was soon far out of sight. And to make the tortoise feel very deeply how ridiculous it was for him to try a race with a hare, he lay down beside the course to take a nap until the tortoise should catch up. Well, the tortoise, meanwhile, kept going slowly but steadily and after a time passed the place where the hare was sleeping. But the hare slept on very peacefully. And when at last he did wake up, the tortoise was near the goal. The hare now ran his fastest, but he could not overtake the tortoise in time. Now, what is the moral of the story? Again, slow and steady wins the race. But come on, if we look at a rabbit and a tortoise, I think all of us would say that the rabbit's going to win the race. I mean, that's just a fable, right? You have a rabbit that's fast, a turtle that's slow. Uh, you got speed. You got no speed. You got great athleticism. We have rabbits at our house. These things are athletic. They're running all over the place. I mean, a tortoise is clumsy. Now, let me ask you this question. When you look at a rabbit and a tortoise, which one are you more like? Let me, let me ask you this. Uh, when, when maybe something new comes out, are you an earlier adopter? Are you fast to jump in or are you kind of slower to, to join in with everything? When it comes to decisions, are you, are you fast at making decisions or do you slow down and uh, do you process things? Maybe that'll help you think about, are you more like a rabbit or a tortoise? And then I want us to think about the disciples because the disciples they were going to lead through great change. And when you think about the disciples, do you think they were more like a rabbit or a turtle? You know, were they fast or were they slow? Well, today we're going to look at the good news of John, the Gospel of John, chapter 21, verses 1 through 14. 
And we're gonna read this story that John gives to us. It's absolutely amazing. And when we're going through this, I just want you to think about these disciples and, and just kind of maybe peg, are, are they more like a rabbit or a turtle? Are they fast or are they slow? So let's jump into this today. John chapter 21, starting in verse one. So John tells us this, after these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples. And when he says again, that just means this is the third time that Jesus has appeared to the disciples after he resurrected from the dead. And he appeared by the Sea of Tiberias and he showed himself in this way. Gathered there together were Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, you ever wonder who the sons of Zebedee were? Well, I'll tell you, they, they were two guys. One was James and one was John, the one that's actually writing this for us. And then two others of his disciples. So Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. So again, Jesus was resurrected. He has appeared to them twice. This is the third account of this. And they really don't see Jesus. They don't know where he's at at this point. And so Peter says, hey, I'm going to go fishing. And they said to him, the rest of the guys said, well, hey, we're going to go with you. So they went out and got into the boat. But that night they caught nothing. So they're out all night, these fishermen. They catch absolutely nothing. Which leads me to this question. What do you do when you know what to do, but not how to do it? See, this is where the disciples were. They knew what they were supposed to do because Jesus, the second time he appeared to them, said, hey, guys, I want you to start the church, what we know as the church. And the church actually means the gathering, the ecclesia. I want you guys to start this church, this movement. They knew what Jesus wanted them to do. Hey, go fish for men, right? But they didn't know how to do it. And I even think now in this time of leading through change, there's a lot of us that, you know, we know what to do. We need to start gathering again and, and get some ministries going again. But, man, how, how do we really do it? And we've talked and consulted and done all kinds of work and planning, even, you know, for June 7th when we come together, because there's a lot of unknowns, you know, how to do this. And the big temptation is when we're not sure how to do something is just to go back to what we've known. That's the big temptation. That's what Peter did. You know, he was supposed to be fishing for men, building the church, but what does he do? He goes back and he fishes for fish. He just goes back to what he always had done, what he knew. And I think that's the temptation for all of us. Hey, let's just go back to the way it was or the way it used to be, but maybe God has more for us than just going back to how it was. So let's keep going on in the story. So just after daybreak, these guys have been out all night, caught nothing in this boat. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach, but the disciples did not know. Remember, John wrote this after the fact, so he's reflecting back on this. The disciples did not know that it was Jesus. They just they saw some guy on the beach, and Jesus said to them, children, you have no fish, have you? And they answered him, no. And you can just imagine this. Hey, you got no fish? And they shout back, no. And he said to them, well, cast the net to the right side of the boat and you will find some. So they cast it. And now they were not able to haul it in because there were so many fish. So they cast this net on the right side of the boat. There's so many fish in the net now that they can't even pull it in the boat. And for some reason, as I was reading this and reflecting on this, it made me think of pregnancy. It made me think of a pregnant woman. Because for years, a woman can live and her womb can be barren. There can be no life within her. But then there's this miracle that happens, right? Just like Jesus and these disciples, there's a miracle where all of a the sudden, there's life in her womb. You know, there's all these fish in this net. And it's such a contrast. And when a woman becomes pregnant and there's life in her womb, you know, she wants it to go slow. God designed pregnancy to go slow. You want it to go slow and steady, right? So everything is healthy because things are changing drastically when a woman becomes pregnant for her and for her husband and, you know, everyone involved. It's not just an interruption. It's a disruption. Things will never be the same again. And you just want it to go slow because that's the way pregnancy is designed to go. But there comes a point 
when you want it to go fast, right? I mean, when, the, when it's time for the baby to come, you want this to happen fast. I remember when Andy gave birth to our first child, we were just hoping this would go fast and go easy, but she was in labor for 24 hours. And I, I looked at Andy and I encouraged her, I comforted her with these words. I said, honey, this is hurting me way more than it's hurting you. You know, you ever say that to your kids right before you paddle them? You know, this is really hurting me, going to hurt me way more than it's going to hurt you because you really don't want to hurt your kids. Well, guess what, guys? That did not comfort her at all. I didn't say that the second time we had a child. Actually, I didn't say it the first time. I'm just joking around. Guys, do not say that. That would not be a great thing to say because, listen, when, when it's time for the baby to come, it's just good that it goes, it goes fast. It just makes it a lot easier. And I think as the disciples were... We're thinking about the changes that were happening. There's been so much change and, you know, God was calling them to lead. I think there were two different approaches that that I see in the disciples and I think I really see in all of us. And one approach was, hey, go fast. You know, when when we're going to lead through change and go through change, it's just good to go fast. And I think to a certain degree, all of us think faster is better. I mean, all the get rich quick schemes, I researched that this week, I found a get rich quick scheme. There's four things that you can do. and You can get rich right away. It's foolproof, it said, yeah. How about, you know, losing weight quickly? If we lose weight, don't we want it to happen fast? Like we just let's lose 30 pounds in a week. Let, you know, the, the, the latest diet, let's do that. Who doesn't like one day shipping, okay? Amazon one day ship. I mean, to a certain degree, faster is always better. And when I look at the disciples, I see Peter as the guy that he likes to always go fast. So as we continue on, the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. And when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on some clothes for he was naked. (laughs) Now, Now listen, that doesn't mean Peter was completely naked. That would just be really weird if he was fishing completely naked. But what it does mean is he was down to his underwear. He just had his underwear on basically and he was fishing, which is still a little bit strange, but I guess that's how Peter rolled. You know, he was, he was rolling that way. So he had to put some clothes on for he was naked. And then look at he jumped into the sea. I mean, this guy just jumps into the sea and he's swimming to Jesus and it tells us later that it's about 100 yards, so he throws these clothes on, and, and he's swimming, you know, to Jesus, and he gets there first. And there is something about going fast, because he went fast, and he got to experience something none of the other disciples got to experience. I mean, he was there with Jesus first, like being in the first car of a roller coaster. I mean, he got to be in his presence first, and, and, and I, I imagine that was absolutely amazing. But also... You know, it was a little bit dangerous. It was a little bit risky because you've seen the movies about Jesus in the Bible days. I mean, these garments weigh a lot and jumping in and you can, the water soaking in and how heavy that was. And even though he's a fisherman, it's a hundred yards in the open sea and he's swimming. I mean, he could have drowned. Who knows what could have happened? And he gets there and he's probably, you know, totally out of breath and all those things. So there's definitely some disadvantages to being fast as well for Peter. But why does John just make the point that, that he was naked, that he was down to his underwear. And I, I think he made it because it's something we can all relate to. I, I, have you ever overslept and, you know, the alarm went off later, you slept through the alarm and you're late for work or you're late for school? What do you do? You, you go fast, right? I mean, you, you try to fix your hair and throw your makeup on and kind of, you know, act like you know, you didn't oversleep or act like you didn't miss your alarm. You, you go fast to try to, to get there and cover up the fact that maybe you overslept or missed, missed your alarm, right? I mean, that's something that we all do. And have you ever maybe had unexpected company? You know, someone rings the doorbell and you're like, wait, I wasn't expecting anyone. What do you do? I mean, you act fast. You start throwing the shoes in the closet and putting the pans away and trying to tidy up your house because you weren't expecting. So you're trying to cover up all the messes, right, to make a good impression. And I think John mentions this because a lot of times when we go fast, we're really trying to cover up a deeper issue in our lives. And the deeper issue for Peter was that he was just all performance based and he was always trying to look good and kind of, you know, be the guy that, you know, Jesus thought had it all together. And, and listen, everybody. God sees you naked. God sees you in your underwear. I mean, God knows who you really are. And I think so many times we 
we go fast and try to cover up these issues in our lives instead of just realizing that, you know, God sees it all. So why don't we just let God be God and let him work in the things in our life that really need work. And what Peter really needed to learn was this whole thing was about love. And later on, Jesus gets Peter alone on the beach and just talks about love and just, it's, it's about love, Peter. It's not about performance. And maybe that's why Jesus, um, you know, or, or John mentioned that, that, G, that, that John mentioned that Peter was naked. So here's, here's the thing. If you go fast, if that's you, you just kind of go fast. That's how you lead through change. If you go fast, you might want to slow down because God might want to do some work in your life. And the other approach, you know, is, is to go slow. And I, I see this really in all the other disciples. In, in John 21, continuing on in verse, verse 8, but the other disciples uh, came in the boat and they were dragging the net full of fish. So they're just kind of dragging along, you know, it's a slow go. They got 100 yards. The other disciples, they're dragging the net full of fish for they were not far from the land, only about 100 yards off. And I don't know if you really realize what season of the Christian calendar we're in. It's not called quarantine. It's actually, it's called Eastertide. Uh, right after the resurrection and the Christian calendar, for the next 50 days, we're in a very slow season. It's just, it's really, it, it's, it's the season that, you know, it's kind of a little boring. I mean, it's just slow. There's not a whole lot happening. Even in the Bible, there's really little written about what happens between the resurrection and the day of Pentecost, which is actually today, Pentecost Sunday, when the Holy Spirit comes and the church has its birthday, the church begins. But that's the season that, that we've been in. And I think there are a lot of advantages to, to going slow. You know, those, those disciples that were on the boat, they had a chance to reflect what was, you know, on what was happening and anticipate, you know, that, that meeting of Jesus, you know, on the, on the beach. And those are a lot of wonderful things that, that you gain when you, when you move slow. But you can also, you know, miss out on a lot of things if you move too slowly. Uh, there's just things you miss out you know, on in life and maybe what God wants to do in your life. If, if you're just always so slow, you're, not, you're just always dragging behind, there's things that, that God has for you that, that you'll miss. You just, you just won't get to be a part of because you've just always been dragging behind. So, you know, one went fast, the others went slow. And if you go slow, here's what you might want to consider. You might want to speed up a, a little bit. But they all, eventually, they all eventually get to Jesus. And so when they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there with, with fish on it and bread. So Jesus already had fish and bread waiting for him. And Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish that you have just caught. And I think Jesus had a lot to do with what they caught. I find that humorous. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the, the net ashore. Good job, Peter. And now you're getting involved, getting the, get the, getting the net and getting the fish in there. Full of large fish, 153 of them. And though... There were so many, the net was not torn. And, and Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. He just gathers them around the fire. Now, none of the disciples dared ask him, who are you? Again, this is an amazing, miraculous event because they knew it was the Lord. And Jesus came and he took this bread and gave it to them. Such a beautiful picture. And did the same with the fish. And this was now the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. So I got a question for you. What lives at the North and South Pole? Well, penguins, right? Aren't they adorable penguins? That's really all that lives at the North and South Pole. Human beings cannot live in the North and South Pole. The climate is just way too drastic. And actually, if you look at a population chart of the, of the world, most people live near the equator, near, near the middle of the earth. That's where there's life. That's, that's where there's renewal, you know, not at the extreme ends of the earth. That's where there's death. And it reminds me of what God said about extremes in Ecclesiastes 7.18. Whoever fears God will avoid all extremes. Why? Because in the extremes, there's death. But there's another way. There's a Latin phrase called the via media, which means the middle road. It's, it's the middle way. It's the equator. It's where there's life. And John Wesley lived in the 1700s. And in the 1700s, there was a lot of extreme views. There were the Puritans and the Catholics. There were the Anglicans and the Protestants. And there was just a lot of fighting going on, even within the church, because of these extreme views. And as John Wesley reflected on this and thought about this, in one of his sermons, he asked this question. Listen, everyone, though we may not all think alike, 
can we not love people like? And I've been thinking these days with, with all that's happening, and it, and it may not be, you know, the Puritans and the Catholics and the Anglicans and Protestants. You know, now it's Democrats and Republicans and conservatives and, and, and liberals. And, you know, and there's, hey, come back to church. And no, it's too early. And, hey, wear a mask and don't wear a mask. And, you know, there's, there's all these opinions and thoughts and on, on, on everything right now. And I think in some ways, you know, we're, we're more divided than ever. And I think this is a great question to ask right now for us as we lead through change, as, as we go through change together and we lead. Come on. Though we may not all think alike, can we not love people like Camp Nazarene? Can we not love people like Big C Church? I mean, can we not really just love one another and respect one another and lead through change in a way that, that would just bring glory to God and just attract the, a lost world to the church of Jesus Christ? <laughs> I want to present this third way because I don't think it's all about going fast or all about going slow. I think you want to go slow <laughs> to go fast. Here, this is the principle. This, this, is, this is, I think, the best way to lead through change, to go slow, to go fast. It's the greatest way to love. It's the greatest way to live. And if, and if you think about it, when you, when you run a marathon, say, say some of you have run a marathon, you go slow at first, right? You train, you train for weeks, months, maybe even years to get to that race day. And then bam, the gun shoots and it's fast and you're off and you're running. You went slow to go fast. Some of your students, I mean, I mean, maybe you've got studied for 12 years and now you're graduating from high school. It's been a slow, long process, but bam, then graduation. And no, you're off to, into the rest of your life, you know, launching off. It just happens so fast. And you're ready. Why? Because you went slow to go fast. I mean, even in marriage, if you, if you think about it, you know, you love for a lifetime. It's just kind of a long, slow process. Why? To have these moments of glorious love that are, they happen so fast. And maybe we get a picture of it. Maybe we get a video of it. We just cherish it. Why? Because we went slow to go fast maybe maybe even you're retired now and just think about it you saved and you planned for years and years you went slow and you, you did your due diligence and one day you you walk out of that company it's over and you get to retire and then it happens so fast but because you went slow you can go fast and you can't retire it is the best way to lead through change and it's our God I mean, if you think about Jesus, for 33 years, he went, he went slow. I, I mean, he just, he grew up, he grew in knowledge and wisdom and favor with man. And he went slow and then, boom, the resurrection, so fast, changed the world as we know it. Think about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, for centuries, just kind of showed up here and there, showed up here and there, just slowly, slowly working. And then on the day of Pentecost, Pentecost launches a church fast, just changes the world think about our heavenly father for all of time for all of time for millenniums god has just worked slow just work slow why so in a moment he can save you he can redeem you he can change your life and it happens so fast oh well, that's our god and how do how do we how do we do this? I mean, we know what we need to do, but how do we do it? Well, listen, we don't go back to the past and all the old ways. No, we just, we go slow to go fast. And that's how we're going to lead through this transition, through this, this next phase of beginning to physically gather. And listen, I understand we're going to keep the virtual church going. So if you're not quite ready, you know, to, to jump in and be here, I totally get that and respect that and understand that. That's why we're doing the virtual church. So worship God at home, right where you are. But maybe you're ready. Maybe you're a little faster. You're ready to come in. Listen, we've, we're taking every precaution to, to, to be safe and to do things the right way. And so we can, we can gather in unity and, and just worship God. And I just pray on June 7th that, that we've done so much preparation and work that we literally can just come into this place and worship God, and worship God together. So listen, I want you to have confidence. I want you to be assured as, as we lead through unprecedented change, we're gonna go slow to go fast. As we wrap up, just a few questions I want you to think about. If I tend to be slow, how can I speed up? If you just kind of tend to be slow all the time, 
I mean, how can you speed up? Maybe, maybe you need to speed up a little bit, okay? If you tend to be fast, how can you slow down? Maybe you are. You're just always jumping ahead. Maybe, hey, maybe you need to cool a little bit. How can you slow down? Just think about that. And last question. In this season of COVID-19, how would you answer John Wesley's question? That we may not all think alike, and that's real, because we don't all think alike. Can we not love people alike? I mean, what's that look like for you? What's that look like for Camp Nazarene? What's that look like for the Big C Church? Come on, everybody. Let's not be divided and fighting. Let's love. Let's go slow to go fast. Hey, I've been saying it the last few weeks, but I, I really want you to sign up for 21 days of training because, again, I'm going to send you push notifications. Go onto our app under We Care. You can register. Every day you'll get a push notification just to help you with this message and help you to keep training on how to go slow, to go fast, how to lead well through change. God, I thank you for the opportunity to present your word. Thank you for these wonderful scriptures, how we can just look into the lives of your disciples and you, Jesus, and and just learn so much. There's so much wisdom that is so practical for today. I'm just amazed. Happened thousands of years today, but years ago, but it's so relevant today. Oh God. Oh God, would we just pause before you in our nakedness? Let you see us as we really are. And let you work on us. Oh God, I'm just open to your spirit. Whatever you want in my life pray everyone that listens to this would have that same attitude and God help us to obey what the spirit tells us and I pray this in the powerful name of the only Lord and Savior Jesus Christ (laughs) amen thanks again for joining us this morning and God bless you you have a wonderful Sabbath day in the Lord